Good. When? Okay, we start with this. Now, the first is a simple sentence. I see. Independent clause. It's a simple sentence. For example, say, say, doctors doctors are concerned about the recent epidemic or about the recent outbreak disease outbreak so let us say doctors are worried worried is a much more appropriate term than concerned it has more weightage hmm, in this context so doctors are worried about the epidemic say. say about the epidemic so doctors are worried about the epidemic A simple sentence, independent clause, and a period, a full stop. Hmm. This is one pattern for punctuation. Yes. The second is independent clause, comma, coordinating conjunction, and an independent clause, period. Coordinating conjunction, fanboys, for, and, yes, okay. So, so let's say this is one I see, yeah, one I see, independent clause, this is an independent clause. Coordinating conjunction and an independent clause. So we put a comma here. Coordinating conjunction, any coordinating conjunction. Remember, fanboys for and nor or not, but of or 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 <clears throat> yet by the so so. These are the coordinating conjunctions. So we add a coordinating conjunction here. You have to give a comma prior to a coordinating conjunction. So what do you want to add? Say doctors are worried about the epidemic, but, 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 they don't know what caused the epidemic, but they are unsure of the epidemic. Hmm? Let's say, but they are unaware of its cause. But they are unaware of its cause. Hmm. Independent clause, comma, coordinating conjunction, but they are unaware of its cause. Independent clause, compound sentence, joining to independent clause with a coordinating conjunction. Another is independent clause, semicolon, independent clause, period. Instead of a coordinating conjunction, instead of this but, we give a semicolon. Two independent clauses, doctors are worried about the epidemic, 
They are rather unaware. They are rather aware of its cause. They are unsure of its cause, or they do not know the cause. Okay, so this is also valid. This is the third form, how you can punctuate a sentence. The fourth is independent clause, semicolon, independent marker word, comma, independent clause, period. You give a period here. Okay. What is an independent marker word? Yes, anyone? You have written this, see, independent marker word. Therefore, moreover, Yes, so it's 3 p.m. Good. <laughs> yes, we have still two hours to go. It's a connecting word. An independent marker word is a connecting word that connects the independent clause. It comes prior to the independent clause or it may come after it also. Generally, it comes prior. Hmm? Let's say independent marker words, therefore, moreover, does, however, consequently, nevertheless, also, furthermore. Hmm? So, doctors are worried about the epidemic. However, they are unaware of its cause. Or moreover, they are unaware of its cause. Nevertheless, they are unaware of its cause. Yes. Therefore, moreover, thus, however, consequently, nevertheless, also furthermore. These are the independent marker words. So you can add any independent marker word. Let us say doctors are worried about the epidemic. However, or moreover, or nevertheless, they are unsure or unaware of its cause. Let us say, however, now you have to put a comma before that. Put a semicolon prior to the independent marker word and a comma after it. Clear? Then we have the sixth is uh, independent clause. No, we are on, we have completed four. Yeah, these two, three, four make up the compound sentences. And uh, then we have the complex sentence. Dependent marker, dependent clause, comma, independent clause, full stop. Dependent marker, Yes, you have to go through your notes. You have to read them. Dependent marker. See, dependent marker words. You have taken all this down. Dependent marker words are words which are added in front of an independent clause and the addition of that word makes the independent clause a dependent clause. Just the mere addition of that word makes the independent clause a dependent clause. That word is known as a dependent marker word because it makes an independent clause a dependent clause. For example, write down this whole list. After, although, as, as if, if, because, before, even if, even though, in order to, since, though, unless, until, whatever, when, wherever, whether, while. 
So I have a big list. You can use any of these words prior to an independent clause and make it a dependent clause. Clear? Say, for example, although, even though, if, or because, these are all dependent marker words. So let's say here, although, Although doctors are worried about the epidemic. Now, doctors are worried about the epidemic. Is an independent clause? Makes complete sense? Full sentence? Independent clause. If I add although, then it becomes although doctors are worried about the epidemic, then there's something more which you don't know. So, it is not an independent clause, it becomes a dependent clause. Clear? Yeah, you can add anything because if any of these words. Hmm? So, complex sentence, dependent marker, dependent clause, this is a dependent marker although, dependent clause, doctors are worried about the epidemic. Then we have a comma and an independent clause. So, although doctors are worried about the epidemic, comma, they are unaware of its cause. Although doctors are worried about the epidemic, comma, although dependent marker, independent clause, comma, independent clause, full stop. Yeah, it's easy, come to it very easy. This is the way you punctuate sentences. Research has been done and uh, it has been found to have eight or nine patterns. These are the generally commonly used eight patterns. The ninth pattern is a compound complex sentence pattern. That is a combination. Actually, it is a combination of this and this. So it is not recognized as a separate ninth pattern. <laughs> so only eight patterns are recognized. Now we come to pattern number six. Independent clause, dependent marker, Dependent clause. So, independent clause, independent clause, doctors are worried about the epidemic. Dependent marker, dependent marker words, clear? Although, after, if, because. So, let us say, Doctors are worried about the epidemic. Let us say because. Because. Depend, in independent clause, doctors are worried about the epidemic. Hmm? Dependent marker, because. Dependent clause, they are unaware of its cause. They are unaware of its cause is a complete sentence. It's an independent clause. Now here we need a dependent clause. So let's say because because its cause because its cause is not known. Hmm? Or you can say because the cause is uncertain. 
a better way to say because or you can say another more because of its uncertain uncertain cause so of its uncertain cause is a dependent clause does not make complete sentence complete sense because dependent burger now you put no commas here just a full stop independent clause dependent marker dependent clause full stop this is one way one way of punctuating the sentence the seventh pattern sixth pattern now the seventh pattern is first part of IC independent clause comma non essential clause or a phrase comma and the rest of the independent clause so let's say doctors doctors are worried about the epidemic hmm? this is the independent clause now we have a punctuation in doctors and we add say who are doctors comma who are it's a non-essential clause so let's not name it let's not be specific if we name who are then it becomes an essential clause let's it is a non-essential clause so it gives more a uh, little bit more information about the sentence and a positive hmm? say doctors both say both cardiologists and uh, say neurologists, family practice physicians, pediatricians, orthopedicians, orthopedics, let's say neurologists, both cardiologists and neurologists, comma. So this is the first part of the independent clause, doctors. Then is a comma, then is a non-essential clause or a phrase. Non-essential clause means that if this is removed, still the sentence meaning will not be changed. But it gives something, but it adds something to the sentence. But it is non-essential because it does not change the meaning. If this is removed and if the meaning is changed or if the meaning is incomplete, then it becomes an essential clause and cannot be removed. But this can be removed. So this is also known as an appositive. So doctors, both cardiologists and neurologists, then the remaining part of the sentence of the independent clause are worried about the epidemic. Are worried about the epidemic. Clear? Now we have first part of independent clause, essential clause or phrase and the rest of them full stop. Now we have an essential clause. This is a non-essential clause. This can be removed. Still, if this is removed, both cardiologists and neurologists, we have doctors are worried about the epidemic. It makes sense, complete sense. Now we say doctors, both cardiologists and Neurologist. So this adds something more to the meaning. It's placed within commas. 
This is the easiest way to punctuate an appositive. This is the easiest way to insert a non-essential clause. But if the meaning changes or if the meaning is not full, is not fulfilled, then let us say doctors who are who are doctors who are cardiologists and neurologists are worried about the epidemic full stop this is another pattern this is the end pattern who are cardiologists and neurologists this is an essential clause because cardiologists and neurologists are worried about the epidemic a pediatrician is not worried or a family physician doctor is not worried an orthopedic is not worried a dentist is not worried cardiologists and neurologists are worried so who are so this is an essential clause it cannot be removed following me an essential clause cannot be removed from a sentence a non-essential clause can be removed from the sentence its removal or its non-removal may or may not affect the meaning of the sentence affect a f f e c t not e f f e c t don't confuse affect effect hmm? yes advice advice v i s c v i c e <laughs> okay so doctors who are cardiologists and neurologists are worried about the epidemic this is pattern a now combinations of this these three patterns compound and complex combinations of this three compound and complex results in many patterns say 9 10 11 12 you can go on making they are compound complex sentences or complex compound sentences but they essentially fall, follow these punctuation rules only they don't follow any other rule say for example doctors who are cardiologists and neurologists are worried about the epidemic huh? semicolon nonetheless nonetheless is nonetheless or therefore 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 they therefore they are undertaking more research Doctors who are cardiologists and neurologists now are worried about the epidemic. Therefore, they are undertaking more research. Which, comma, which, which, the research, which what, research, regarding what, research which is research we are expanding the sentence we are simply expanding the sentence complex compound sentences pack a lot of meaning they are very powerful sentences but they have to be formed grammatically correct an incorrect compound complex sentence will lose marks you will lose marks
So you need practice basically. It's all a matter of practice. Now nothing very difficult or nothing very hard. The classics that the books that you read, you will find most of the sentences in them are compound complex sentences. So doctors who are cardiologists and neurologists are worried about the epidemic. Therefore, they are undertaking more research. Which which what? The cure or its cause. Which would which would ultimately lead to its cure? Hmm? Which would ultimately lead to its cure? Lead L E A D Metal lead L E A D lead is a metal. Lead, L E A D. The spelling is the same. So you must know which word you are using in which context. You can play around with the words. Like, for example, which would ultimately lead to its cure? Let's not play around with this words. Or you can say, you know, which would lead to its, ultimately leads to its cure. And the cause is known as the uh, lead. Because the lead content in the water is more. So you are saying lead in one sentence and lead in another sentence. So that's playing around with words. Let's leave, leave that to poets. <laughs> poets generally play, play around with words. Let's leave that to poets. Hmm? We are doing prose, not poetry. Let's keep it simple. Doctors who are cardiologists and neurologists are worried about the epidemic. Therefore, they are undertaking more research, which would ultimately lead to its cure. Wood is a bit more, it gives more certainty. We are not certain whether it will lead or will not lead. So, might, might or may. The difference between may and might? Probability. May is more probable. Might is still more uncertain. The unprobability of might is still more. Mightily far-fetched. Remember this word, mightily far-fetched. So this means that if you use might, then it means that it is more far-fetched and may is more nearer. It, it can be probable. The probability of may is more than might. So which may? Might here is far-fetched gives a sense of depression. So let's be optimistic, which may. Why are we using may? Because we are not sure. We can use can, which can ultimately leads to a cure. But instead of can, because we don't know whether it will lead or will not lead, so we use may. Probability. May ultimately leads to a cure. So this is another sentence form from compound and complex. So these are the patterns, these are the basic eight uh, patterns of uh, the how a sentence is to be punctuated, punctuated correctly. Any questions? Write this all down and in the next class we have an examination you will be given sentences and you have to punctuate them, identifying the dependent clauses, the independent clauses, the dependent markers, the independent markers and whether they are simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences or compound complex sentences.
and thereafter you have to add more variety to your writing. How can you spice up your writing? Yes, you, are, you write all the types of structures, structures of the sentence, simple, compound, complex, compound, complex and the functions of the sentence, declarative, remember? Declarative, interrogative, exclamatory and the last one. Yes. <laughs> Remember them. Hmm? Declarative declares, interrogative asks a question, exclamatory exclaims, and the last one gives a command. So, imperative gives a command. Hmm? So these types of you write and you can add variety. Use emotions with few words. Say more with less. Try to say more with less words, few words. Reading Shakespeare. You are reading Shakespeare. Yes, you were supposed to read Hamlet. Have you read? Okay. Yes. So the six, so here Shakespeare will help you. See how he uses a vast range of emotions in very few words. Anyway, let's end this and uh, let's call it a day. Okay, we meet. Day after tomorrow. Thank you.